child. <laughs> All right. So um, CSS, or should we call this designed for developers? So we should start with some basic stuff. So I'll have like the, you know, app name here. And then in main, we have like, um, you know, some sort of, let me put this on here. Uh, then on the H2, we should have like, you know, some sort of like sub headline. Then there's probably a paragraph alarm if some somewhere. Yeah. And an image, right? And we'll, we'll, we'll just do like, I always like doing images of Switzerland because, <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. I once uh, jumped off. I went to Zermatt, Switzerland. Uh, from my birthday a few years ago, and me and my daughter jumped off the Gorner Grot, which is this, it's over here to the left of the Matterhorn, and we did wow. paragliding. Uh, well, that must have been it, beautiful. It, it was, it was. It was in March or April, um, so it wasn't as snowy, but it was, it was still pretty cold. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, and then we'll have a a footer with, you know, like a paragraph in there. That's just copyright. Okay, so general rules for design when it comes to CSS. The first thing is like you want to try to get everything back to a like a normal starting point. So mm -hmm. think about all the things that like are default styles. So the first one is box sizing um, border box. So that way you don't have any like if you say this needs to be a certain width, whether it's percentages or pixels or what have you. Um, it actually means the, the, the content, the padding and the border. Yeah. Otherwise, the default is content box and you're just talking about the width of the content. Then the padding and border get added on top of that. Mm -hmm, yeah. Next up, let's set all the margins to zero. Things like paragraphs, the H1, the H2, those all have default margins. You just saw mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. If I turn it off, you can see the top and bottom margins there. Mm, yeah. That also includes body, right? Like if I said, okay, if instead of doing that, I said, um, hey, uh, header, main, and footer all had background color blue, right? Yeah. You're going to see all this space. All this white space, right? I just literally targeted the three tags on the page, and yet there's all this white space. Yeah. So the left and the right are because of bodies, margin, mm. right? If I just target body and I say margin zero, that will get rid of that. Okay, great. But those top and bottom margins are on the H1, the H2, and the paragraphs. Now, these yeah. margins here are within, you know, the main, so you're not seeing white space, right? Mm. But then you could see it here from this paragraph, right? Yeah. So we can just normalize that and say nothing has a margin by default. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's not really an issue here if we did like, a, let's do like a UL here, you know, like um, we'll do like an H3 that says things I love about Switzerland. <laughs> okay. And we'll do a UL with an LI, uh, fondue, okay. um, chocolate, other cheese. <laughs> oh, I should put in here, raclette. That's a little different than fondue. That's where they melt the cheese, like where they cut in half and they stick it under the broiler till it gets like really melty and then they scrape it off. It's oh. very good. <laughs> yes. Um, Cool. So, all right. So again, uh, the reason why I wanted to add that was because ULs by default have padding, right? Yeah. That's where the bullets go. Like if I say list style is none for everything, cool. That takes away the bullets, but the padding is still there, right? Yeah. Can I get rid of this? Add? No, of course not. Why would I be? Wait, maybe that's, there we go. It's a weird place. Put the X. Okay. So then I can set padding to zero on everything. There's only yeah. a few things that have default padding, but ULs and OLs are one of them. Okay. Yeah. Now, 
there's another thing, font weight, right? Some things are by default bold. So let's mm -hmm. change that and set it to normal. And then font size, right? I'm just going to set everything to the body's font size of 16 pixels. Now yeah. everything is normalized, okay? Now we can start to design. Yeah. So the main thing when it comes to color scheme, well, first off, let me show you. One of the easiest like uh, design tricks you can do is just make everything centered, right? People love it. It's also very easy to be responsive when you do that, right? Because yeah. everything's centered, okay? Yeah. Now our images have have some issues there, right? So we could say like image, um, by default, the widths should be 100%, okay? Yeah. So now that that's responsive now, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not the best though to have that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that we could do is maybe put like a max width on there of 800 pixels if we wanted to. And this again is how you, you don't really need to design mobile first. I get why mobile first exists. It's a, it's a way to make sure that developers are thinking about mobile first before yeah. desktop, you know, um, the, the numbers are always changing, but it's anywhere between 70 to 80% of all internet traffic comes from mobile devices. So yeah. the fact that we design for desktop means we're basically saying that we don't care about a majority of our users. Mm, yeah. And so to flip that on its head, the industry said, okay, let's design for mobile first. And then if yeah. we have time, we'll worry about desktop. Oh, that's just the opposite end of the problem. So yeah. if you do things like think of percentages and using max and min pixel values, you can design for both simultaneously. You don't, it doesn't have to be this or that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's nice. Now on mobile, you should never really have things go to the edge, right? Yeah. So one of the things that we could do is with header, main and footer, we could do like padding 20 pixels. This is always a, like a great amount of padding. 20 pixels is just such an awesome value um, mm -hmm. because it it's just like the right amount. I don't know how to explain it any other way. Yeah. And um, and then we could start to do things like maybe put their margin at 20 pixels, right? So these are yeah. our sections to kind of separate away from each other. For the image, I would also probably put for that image like a, a margin of uh, 20 pixels on the top and bottom and nothing on the left and right. Okay, and it's already yeah. starting to look better, just literally using these 20 pixels, text align center, and it's still 100% responsive, mm -hmm. right? So from here, we can start to add in fonts. Um, the main rule with fonts is you should have, you should try to strive for one font, but you can have a different font for your headlines than you do for your body copy, if you want, yeah. okay? So for instance, for like my H1, H2, H3, I could have font family of, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say Georgia. It seems to be a popular one, All right? And we'll do a font size of like 20 pixels. Okay, that looks fine to me. Yeah. And I don't really need anything else there. Um, for my, I might want to do a margin of 20 pixels above and below and zero on the left and right. You can see headers starting to get a little bloated up there because of that. Uh, mm. So I might come back on uh, header. Let's see what happens if we take that away. That's not too bad. Yeah. That's not bad at all. So with the padding and then the combined space of the headline, that looks good to me. Um, and then for the body, uh, I'm gonna do the font family to something like sans serif. So maybe Verdana to, to remove the serifs. And then I might go a little bit lower on the font size here, just yeah. to have a, a different body font size. So I try to do a serif font for headlines and a sans serif font for body copy. Hmm. Right. And so they stand out a little bit from each other. Right. Yeah. Um, 
Now colors, what if I wanted to start adding color? So the basic rule with colors is to use black and white with one like splash color. And splash means like use sparingly. So a, let's just pick, um, I don't know, I like the oranges in this mm. picture. So yeah. maybe what we can do is like um, do like a color picker on those oranges. I think I have a color picker extension, but I can't remember. Uh, let's see. I might not, and that's okay if that's the case. Um, what I can do, I believe I can go into like preview and uh, yeah, copy that into there. And then I think I have show inspector. No, that's not what I want. Show magnifier. I basically want like one of those hard oranges. I'm just going to guess. I really don't. I, mm -hmm. I don't have a color picker right now without opening yeah. Photoshop or going and finding some website. So um, for now, I'm going to start by putting it on B so that I can just figure out what color I want. So we'll start with orange. And then my favorite color picker is to actually just inspect here and then click yeah. on the, the color in dev tools oh no this has a color picker so i think you can toggle color picker how do i do it you can't just be in here it's gotta be huh. i guess so anyways it's more of like a reddish orange mm. i think so that looks good to me. So I'm going to copy that, and that's going to be my, oh, see, it works there. It just doesn't work over here for some reason. Interesting. All right. Um, so I will put that in there, and that will be my orange for that. Okay. Eh, maybe a little bit. That's fine. I don't want to mess with it too much. So let's say I decide that's my splash color. All right. Yeah. So some things that some ways that we could use this to add a little color to our page is for header and footer. I want to take that and flip it. OK, so I'm going to say the background color is that color. OK, for those. and then the color of all text in there is going to be white. Now, I may yeah. have to go in, I think, footer. Yeah, works fine with that. But with header, I'm going to have to do, I have to change it because it's, you know, later. Yeah. Um, honestly, probably the best is to take that off and then add it directly to the H2. Hmm. So it gets that. Then I don't have to take it off everything else. So the H2 and the H3 get it. Just the H1 goes to white, right? Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Like, I have a site now that's fully responsive that looks fine, mm -hmm. right? Like, CSS-wise, it looks great, you know? Yeah. Um, and there wasn't too much that I had to do. I had to reset some defaults just to get it to a good starting place. Mm -hmm. Then I added 20 pixels padding everywhere to give it some space. I... Um, I found a splash color. I set that as I inverse the header and the footer to just yeah. use that color um, to, and just immediately start like that's my theme, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other place I use it was on headlines. If I had a button in here, I would probably also use it on the button. OK, yeah. um, some other. So let's say that we have let's let's add that real quick. We'll have a, a form in here. That just has um, like a. Paragraph that says, sign up for our newsletter. Okay. And I'm going to have an input type text or type email. Uh, placeholder is going to be email address. And ARIA label will also be email address and required. Okay. Yeah. Then I have an input type uh, submit um, whose value is. Uh, just that's fine. We can just leave it to the default of submit. So that's what that looks like right there. Right. So some 
some CSS that I would do for this is mm -hmm. um, for the form, I would do margin 20 pixels again to space it out from everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to kind of delineate it from the rest of the page. So I might even put like a border on it, one pixel solid, and I'm going to use that color. Okay. Yeah. So because of that, I'll also put some padding at 20 pixels, give a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. And um, the paragraph inside that form will have a uh, margin, eh, might be able to get away with 10 pixels for this one. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, for the inputs. So it's a, people love big inputs when it comes to text. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I'm going to do, and we'll see how bad this is, but I'm going to put the input, both inputs on their own line and put paragraphs around them. Perfect. Okay. Let me put a paragraph around this, even though it is like naturally going to its own line because it's mm -hmm. the only inline element. I still want to put that on there. Okay. So for inputs, um, we have two inputs here. We have the, the button input, right? And we have the form input. So one of the things that we can do here is we can change this to a button of type submit. And that way we can style them separately. Semantically, still the same, but I do have to put the word submit and close it off right, compared yeah. to an input. Okay, so that's there. So now I'm going to style these a little differently. So for the form input, I always make the font size a little larger, right? Mm -hmm. Just something so that they can put their email address in and they don't have to really like squint at what they're typing, you know? Yeah. Um, people love that. They love big inputs. Go to like Google search homepage, especially if, it, if it's the only input, right? Mm -hmm. Now, some other things I'll do is I'm going to drastically increase the padding on this. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do as much on the left and right as I do on the top. It, it's going yeah. to be maybe half. Well, I think I'm going to do this 10 and maybe this 5. Right? Perfect. So it's more than enough that like their text isn't going right up against the edge, but it's not too yeah. much. Right? Cool. Um, some people will do like, uh, you know, maybe uh, the border radius like five pixels or something, give it a little bit of rounded corners. When mm. you do that, the the default border um, kind of takes over. So we could set the border to something like a one pixel solid, and maybe we use our splash color there just to yeah. create like a little bit of edge. I don't like that. Now I see that with the other border. Um, mm. So maybe what I can do with the other border for the form border is increase it just a little bit to make it yeah. a little thicker, okay? And then for the submit button itself, um, so we'll target that button. And again, we're going to inverse it. So spell button correctly first. <laughs> uh, then background color is going to be our splash color. Yeah. The border is going to go to zero pixels. Um, the padding, um, probably the same thing, 10 pixel, 5 pixel. So more on, ooh. No, I kind of want more on the left and right. So I kind of want this to be double. There we go. Mm. Uh, color is white and border radius is five pixels as well, just to give it a little mm. bit of roundness. All right. That's it. Right. So that's forms. Again, they kind of take over the text align center. Right. And um, yeah, I think that's. I think that looks good. It's it's basic stuff here. We're just we're just increasing text as we need to, decreasing as we need to, adding space. You know, the the main thing that I that kills a design is things are too cluttered together, right? Mm, yeah. So adding space is good. Delineating, like here, we have the form completely separate from everything else, just by using that splash color on our on our um on our border there. Yeah. And that's it. Um, if I had another button next to this for whatever reason, like say I have another button here of type uh, reset that just says cancel, right? Then yeah. what I would most likely do is give this a class of cancel. 
and then coming down here, I would style it a uh, couple things, margin, uh, nothing above and below, but 10 pixels to the left and right, just give them a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. And then uh, form cancel button, I already forgot the class, no, just cancel. So button with the class of cancel. Um, I would set the background color to like a light gray, yeah. kind of set it off a little bit. Maybe a little, oh, hold on here. Uh, you know, like a little bit of a darker gray. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. So again, remember, we talked about this, like use black and white and every shade of gray in between, and then that one mm -hmm. splash color. Obviously yeah. with images and videos and things like that, they're gonna have every color. That's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. But there, I see so many times just like, a color explosion where you know this one's purple and this one's green and 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 this <laughs> down here is blue and up here is pink and it's like whoa there's too many colors and you're not creating brand consistency go look at any website what is youtube but black white grays and red one red right yeah. they have that red everywhere it's their subscribe button it's the bell it's the the actual player on the video it's their logo right yeah um, you look at Facebook, it's black, white, gray, and blue. Yeah. Twitter is a different blue, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's just, it's just consistency and it creates a brand. And I just picked this orange, you know, just cause I liked it within this image. Right. Mm -hmm. But I could have done this with anything. Right. Yeah. So instead of orange, I could have decided, you know, I want, um, steel blue right and that's like a color that i've used in other videos yes. um and then everywhere that i had this i just changed it to steel blue so now the mm -hmm. headlines are steel blue um the form border is steel blue yeah. the um form input border is steel blue and the button background color is steel blue and that's it i just changed the whole theme on my website with that color, right? Mm. But that was it. I didn't go crazy, and and I can use any color I want, and it looks good. Yeah. 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 Cool. It looks really good. <laughs> awesome. So that's it. Yeah. That's styling uh, for developers. Just some basic, easy, simple rules to follow, um, mm. and you'll learn more and more techniques. Um, I didn't start with all these techniques. I just learned them because graphic designers kept giving me Photoshop files that followed these same standards mm -hmm. where they had 20 pixels or 10 pixels of padding or margin. Uh, they kept centering everything. Um, they kept rounding the borders of inputs and buttons. They kept adding padding to the sides of inputs and the sides of buttons to create this like button look. You know, yeah. if you look at my buttons here and you look at the buttons up on CodePen, right, yeah. you can see the consistency there, right? Mm. Um, and so that's just the things that I've learned over the years as a developer of having to constantly repeat these designs that actual designers have created. Mm, yeah. Follow certain standards. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing, stop recording.